Television camera position 4,000 feet from the base of a rocket launching pad, a rocket rises vertically and its speed is 600 feet per sec. When it has risen, 3,000 feet. How fast is the distance from the television camera to the rocket changing at that moment? So again, start by drawing a diagram. You've got a little tiny rocket. Flying up in the air and a camera positioned right here. This is 4,000 feet. This is changing. And this is changing. So I'll use Y and Z for those things. And if we write down what we know, okay? What do we know? That we know that it's rising vertically, so the dy dt is 600 feet per second, and we want to find, this is for part A, that y equals 3. So if we set up our equation, do we have a relationship here? Yes, we could say that x squared plus y squared equals z squared. And because the x value is constant, it'll always stay 4,000. We've done questions like this already. So if we take the derivative with respect to time and do the implicit differentiation of this case, that's just a number, so that's going to be 0. And we want to find it at 3,000. So I hope you recognize this too as the 3, 4, 5 triangle. And so we can plug everything in that we know. 2 times 3,000 times 600 equal 2 times 5,000 dZdt. Someone please check that with a calculator. That seems, does it seem reasonable? Does it work? Hmm? That's what you got on your, okay, good. Perfect. So 360 meters per second is how fast the distance from the camera to the rocket is changing. And this question is just a warm-up because we've done this already. Now, what's new for today is in part B, they're saying if the camera is always looking at the rocket, then this angle theta would also be changing. At that moment, when it's at that 3,000 feet, how fast is the angle changing? So for part B, we still know dy dt. Is at 600 feet per second. But now we want to find out d theta dt. Is there a way that we can write an equation that relates theta to y. So we have still at the same moment, and again, we'll look at our regular picture here. In our regular picture in the blue, I've indicated all the things that can change. That can be very helpful because this is where you can create your equation from. 
We never plug in the 3,000 into this part of the equation because that 3,000 is just at a moment. That's when we're finding the rate of change is at that moment, but y is still changing, theta is still changing, z is still changing. So what I'm looking for right now is, is there some sort of equation I can make that includes theta and includes y? And for that, it is as simple as using Sophic's law. You know that tan of theta is opposite, which is y, over adjacent. And I use tan because the adjacent 4,000 was set. You could have used sine for opposite over hypotenuse, but then that would have used y and z, and both of those are changing. So it just would have added the complexity to the question a little. So can we do the derivative of this? Absolutely. Take the derivative with respect to time. And what is the derivative of tan? You remember? Secant squared. And then a chain rule, you would have d theta dt. So implicit differentiation is like, do your derivative like normal, but just add the dy dt, d theta dt, whatever you have. So this side would end up being 1 over 4,000 dy dt. So we want to solve for d theta dt. We know dy dt at 3,000. Here is the, I'll redraw this triangle. And we have two options at this moment, okay? Can you see that at 3,000, you've got an actual triangle? Option one, we could find out what theta is. Because when we're plugging things into this equation, we're going to need to plug in dy dt, which we know is 600. But we would also need to plug in something for theta. Okay? So if we wanted to, option one. Should I do option two first? Option two is next. Option two, which we'll now rephrase and call it option. theta is really easy to find because it's just the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So if I look at that triangle, cos of theta is 4 fifths, 4,000 over 5,000. And so now what could I do with this equation? My equation, well, the secant squared is really 1 over cos squared theta, d theta dt, equals 1 over 4,000 dy dt, if I get d theta dt by itself, multiply both sides by the cos squared, and now without solving for theta, where the cos is, I could replace that with 4 fifths, I replace the dy dt with 600, And figure this out with our calculator. Now, an interesting thing that comes up with units in this is, oh, the question never said degrees or radians. Do I have a choice? Could it be either one? No. All of our derivatives that we found for sine and cos and tangent, although we never really explicitly said it very much while we were doing it, those derivatives only work out nicely if things are in radians. If you, do a if you wanted the angle in degrees, 
you would have a little bit more mouth to do. So another advocate for why are radians used in higher level math? Well, their derivatives are nicer than if they were in degrees. So our units here has to be radians per second. Okay. I like that better than option two. Hopefully right side. Option two says find theta. So you would go to your triangle and maybe you would have tan of theta is three over four. Go to our calculator. Find our reference angle, which happens to be our actual angle. We have to be in radians. Well, technically, we could be in radians or degrees, but our final answer is still going to be in radians per second, so may as well be in radians all the way. We find out that theta is 0.6435. In this situation, does it make sense that it's in quadrant one and not quadrant three? Because tan is positive. Because if we look at our picture, it's not like the camera's going to be pointing into the ground down below at some huge angle. It's going to be an acute angle between zero and 90 degrees. So the only answer for theta that we need is this first answer. And then we would go from this step and we would just plug in cos of that angle all squared. I'll type it in right now. Divided by 4,000 times by 600. I had that little apprehension before I pushed enter, but it worked out. It is the same answer. Technically, what's nice about option one is you didn't need a calculator. Like, we used a calculator to simplify, but technically, this would be on, you know, a lot of university exams. They don't let you use your calculator. And so, this would give you a nicer answer than this because you could do this without your calculator. So that's why I've listed as option one. All right, we'll do one more angle question. A kite 100 feet above the ground moves horizontally at a speed of eight feet per second. At what rate is the angle between the string and the horizontal decreasing when 200 feet of string have been let out? So again, you're going to find that these related rate questions, you read them, and then you might make one of these sounds. Because it's sort of like, it seems overwhelming. But what do we have to do? We have to draw a picture of what's happening. So we've got a kite. So I'm going to draw a string. And that's a creep. Um, there's a string with a kite, and it is moving horizontally at a speed of 8 feet per second. So this naturally makes a right angle triangle here. We know that this x value is changing. And as you let out the string, okay, this angle here is going to be getting smaller. I don't know how this person did this perfectly. It's, this would be quite the skill to actually have a kite perfectly stay at 100 feet above the ground. So this 100 doesn't change. But this value here is changing as well. So in green, I labeled all the things that are currently changing. This person is able to manipulate how fast they let the string out. 
so that this the height never goes over a hundred feet. That is scary. Okay. So what do we know? We know that dx dt is eight feet per second. And can you see that the way that I've drawn my diagram, that x value is increasing, so it would be a positive value of 8. We want to find d theta dt is our question mark at z equals 200. So interesting that this question, we've got a value here that isn't related to x or theta, but we can still make our equation. And again, I can make an equation using 10 that would just use the theta as an x. So 10 of theta would equal opposite 100 over adjacent x. And I might write this as tan of theta equals 100 x to the negative 1. So when I take the derivative with respect to time of this whole equation, derivative of tan is secant squared. Let's look at differentiation. So d theta dt equals derivative of this side would be negative 100 x to the negative 2. And if we redraw our triangle here, when z is 200, we could do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So you would have 200 squared minus 100 squared, and then square root it. Couple of options here. You could do it on your calculator. So 200 squared minus 100 squared. You could either write this as a square root of 30,000, or if you could do that in your head, which I think you could, because those numbers you're good at, you could also write this one as 100 root through, which mental math wise is probably a lot easier than doing the 200 squared minus the 100 squared and then noticing, hey, I could pull out 100 squared out of this to make it a mixed radical. It's probably easier to use a similar triangle right from the beginning. So I'm going to use this value, 100 root 3, instead of the square root of 300,000. So when we're plugging things in here, again, um, here's our theta. Cos of theta adjacent over hypotenuse. And what's nice about cos of theta here is we could have used this triangle up here as well. And this reduces nicely to just root 3 over 2. Or we could have figured out theta. And this might have been on a non-calculator question, even to figure out theta, because it's on your pie plane. You recognize this theta. What angle would it be from your unit circle? You could use sine. You could go, oh, sine of theta is 1 over 2. Sine of theta is a half. Remember that and say, 30 degrees. Or maybe from here you're like, oh, cos of theta is root 3 over 2. Theta is going to be 30 degrees. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, d theta dt get by itself. I'm going to multiply both sides by cos squared theta times a negative 100 over x squared dx dt. Do we know all of the information? Yes. Okay. We know cos of theta is root 3 over 2, so cos squared will be 3 over 4 times a negative 100. We know that we are finding this when x is equal to 100 root 3. And that is getting squared. And dx dt was 8. So again, multiplying this all out on your calculator, you could, if you wanted to keep the square root in there, if you wanted an exact answer, I would, oh no, I don't even need that. Yeah, let's just multiply it in our calculator. 3 divided by 4 times negative 100 over As a fraction, I got negative 1 over 50 feet per second or negative 0 0.02, no, feet. We're at angles, right? Radians per, is it seconds? Yes, radians per second or negative 0 0.02 radians per second as our So again, if we look at these questions, I think that the steps of actually doing the math are not hard. The hard part is everything you need to set stuff up. You have to be able to read the question and draw the diagram. You have to set up what you know and what you want to find. In the setup, I'm just going to do the entire thing. Some things that cause problems sometimes is if you try to put too much into one diagram. So notice I drew a diagram first with the green arrows showing what's changing. X is changing, theta is changing, Z is changing. If things aren't changing, like the 100, I could put that number there. We want to find it at Z equals 200, but I don't want to label the 200 on this diagram because then I might think that those numbers aren't changing. I labeled the 200 on a separate diagram and said, this is the situation we're at when we're trying to solve our equation. And it's in this separate triangle that I can put all the values in, into my equation once I've done the derivative. So we set up our first diagram showing what's changing. We list what we know and what we want to find. And then the challenge will become, can I create some sort of equation with everything that I've learned that connects these things? Okay. So in angle rotation questions, they're usually right angle questions where you can use SOCATOR and choose either sine, cosine, or tangent. Once you have that, then it's just implicit differentiation and plugging things in. But the setup is what makes all of these questions a bit of a challenge. So now we've done volume questions, area questions, triangle questions, similar triangle questions, angle questions. They all have the same theme, but they are all somewhat challenging because the setup is a little bit different every single time. So they do take some time to practice. 